Hey everybody, tonight I'm just going to do a little video where I read right off a blog that I produced today. And uh, this is something that the Lord's been showing me lately in spirit while I am involved with ministry, chaplains, ministry groups, bishops, elders, pastors, the whole shebang. And uh, this has been an ongoing process for me since I um, associated myself with different clergymen, which of course um, in Galatians, Paul, the Apostle Paul doesn't, uh, doesn't think too much of that. Um, and uh, Galatians 1.10 says, For I do not now persuade men or God, question mark, or do I seek to please men, question mark, for if I yet please men, comma, I should not be the servant of Christ, and this is something that I've been learning, um, and being in church leadership, and it's a very hard lesson that I've been learning, and uh, so this is why I decided to make this little blog tonight, even though I'm not the best well-spoken uh, person in the world, I wanted to make a spiritual point tonight about uh, what it takes to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's a lowly and dependent heart on the Lord, waiting on the Lord, moving only when the Lord sends you. It's not something we do between our ears by learning a sound doctrine Bible doctrines and applying the letter of the law and so forth and so on. No, it's something we do by actually following the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when I got married and the Lord was speaking to me very personally, I went to a pasty, pastor of a church, and I asked him, what is going on? All these things are happening. I just went down a litany of the things the Lord was doing in my life, and I wrote them in a book. I wrote them for about a year. I have a year's, over a year's worth of stuff in there, but I was freaking out because God was so real. He was speaking to me, uno to uno, one on one. I understand very, very clearly what my direction was uh, for my life and who this woman was to be to me, which she became my wife. And of course, I had prayed for 30 years for this wife. So um, I guess God honored my prayers by for about a year. Um, it was uh, It was uncanny. It was uncanny just how personally... Um, I dare say almost, although it was from within me and by the Holy Spirit, but it was almost, um, Old Testament style. I mean, I even had an Abraham type of experience where God told me to end the relationship and I went to do it and, uh, he stopped it. And a lot of people would say, well, that was your flesh rejoicing. You know, a lot of this, these church type of people, they, they take the, they take their Bible and their training again, applying it in the, in the power of their own mind instead of having the Lord speak through them. And guess what happens normally? You might get a near right uh, uh, answer, but it's not going to be the Word of God to you. It's not going to be uh, quickened to you because it's not the Lord speaking through them. But what this this was was an Abraham type of experience uh, where I knew that God was. Well, I didn't know God was testing me. I thought he, he wanted me to end the relationship. But when I went to do it, um, I didn't have to end it. I was told by an elder, we don't throw people away. And it was like a great weight came off my shoulder and everything moved in perfect timing and detail from that time forward until the day that I got married. And, um, and now, and of course now it's more of a, a faith walk. That was a mountaintop type of experience, but I learned that I could hear that the Lord Jesus Christ very specifically speak to me at least every three days. And it blew me away because I was always taught God doesn't work that way. And that's what that pastor said. God doesn't work that way today. And I asked the Lord, I says, how can you use people as pastors don't even know they can hear you? And the Lord told me I use who I can. And so without further ado, I'm going to read uh, my little blog a day. Uh, about the spirit of Antichrist um, and uh, the retread 
that Satan has done um, to try to get people away from following the Lord Jesus Christ and, and rather to leaning to their own understanding and following men. And I call this the spirit of Antichrist transforms itself. 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this, that the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. John 4, 35. Say not, there are yet four months, and then comes harvest? Question mark. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Now, <clears throat> 1900 years ago, John penned these words. It was the beginning of the church age with few workers for Christ. There weren't too many Christians then. The spirit of Antichrist has already come, trying to divert the brethren off course and simply abiding in Christ by grace. It's by grace we're saved. It's by grace that we grow. It's not a work of ourselves, but a work of the Lord. I'm interjecting that. The new church establishment set up in an Old Testament style hierarchy again diverted brethren from moving and functioning in the spirit of truth who is Christ. Elders, pastors, and men holding the God-given office, gifting, and authority were often quickly made subservient to another gospel in having men as their heads instead of the spiritually mature men identifying believers in and towards Christ. I'm sorry, that should be edifying believers in and towards Christ. So an elder is a spiritually mature man who edifies believers through speaking through them or his own personal experience in the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, it would always be scriptural. But it's a personal relationship, a personal experience where he edifies you. You feel good. You go, wow, that's just what I needed to hear. Edify believers in and towards Christ because he's explaining to them how to have a personal, a closer personal walk in the Lord Jesus Christ and grow into Christ's likeness themselves. I now believe that the ones called by name, the Ecclesia, in the tail end of the church age, are being deceived by those who claim to be in the Bible-based church, when in truth, this is merely a transformation or retread of yet another spirit of Antichrist in using the Bible doctrinally while twisting truth, which is only revealed by abiding in Christ Jesus and revealed by the Spirit of Truth, who is Jesus Christ. So we can only know the truth of God if we know the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't get it between our ears and try to put it over people in the flesh. Okay, and then I go on to say, give another example. Another Bible passage that is often misquoted is found in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. I'm sure this is sound familiar to you. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, which is singular, by the way, of the Father, Son, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This passage, Jesus Christ was commissioning as officers, the 11 disciples, to go out and preach his gospel. They were called, chosen, and sent in obedience to Christ himself and empowered to perform such a task by the Holy Spirit. We as Christians today, specifically when involved in ministry, which is to be used to edify the body of believers, must know when we are sent by the Lord and, we are, and when we are simply operating in the flesh. Anything else simply strikes God from the equation and remains 
fruitless. Satan always tries to usurp God's authority by placing men, and women nowadays, as spiritual heads, and they once again attempt to be in command and control over others in religious zeal, pride, and intellect. Satan, who is the father of lies, goes about deceiving many as they forget that Satan knows his Bible better than any mortal man. Matthew 24, 24 and Mark 13, 22. For false Christs and false, false prophets shall rise and shall sow signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. How many of these type of people have you seen on TV? So when we study the scriptures or fellowship with others, 1 John 4, we must discern by spirit what is sound doctrine in context to our understanding only as revealed by the Holy Spirit. We are never to act, move, or follow independently of Jesus Christ within us. This is why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but always acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So in closing, Romans 12, 2, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's in spirit, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. We only get that by moving in Christ, right, as revealed by the Holy Spirit. We don't get that by how well our gray matter functions between our ears. And this is something that I believe in what I call the end of the church age. Satan has moved into doing, he's moved to, to taking the Bible-based church and uh, in the tree of knowledge crowd, surely you don't think, and he's put God out of the equation and using the Bible. He's using the Bible without the Holy Spirit, without God. That's a trap that men fall into. That is the spirit of Antichrist, I believe, today within the church system. And, of course, just to recap, uh, it was originally set up as a um, kind of an Old Testament priesthood, you know, the uh, with Constantine, and you had priests and... Uh, which the Bible says we're all high priests if we follow Jesus Christ because Christ is the only mediator between God and man. But again, in the in the old days, in the beginning of the church, they tried to set up an establishment, a new church establishment, uh, with uh, with an old style hierarchy, like diverting brethren from moving and functioning in the spirit of truth, who is Christ. I'm rereading that line. So it's gone from that to Bible. Now we learn a Bible between our ears, and whoever speaks the best, whoever gets their point across the best, uh, they are the leaders. But we have to know truth, who is the truth in Jesus Christ, and learn to walk in obedience to him as his disciple. If we can't do that, we are more and more likely to be deceived. And that's what an elder does, quite frankly. That's what a pastor does, all these names that they have. There's somebody that had the maturity to walk in and of the Lord Jesus Christ to help younger sheep. God bless you all. Have a good day. Bye.